This week on the Spotlight, uh, I was in San Francisco and uh, Rob's book came out, so uh, I don't really know what to say about Rob's book. You know what? Hold on. Fuck this. Go ahead, KB. <laughs> you got it. Surprise! <laughs> From when your book came out, I hooked it up to my clapper. Buy my book! Buy my book! Buy my book! Buy my book! Yeah, they pulled him out of bookstores after Brentano's manager shot himself. How about some wine? Fabulous! Enjoy yourselves, everybody! Viva la Revolution! Viva la Quebec! Welcome to the Only Anthem Podcast. This is Corey. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. You don't like my... You're talking about my, yes, my old dog, Quebecois. Becky. Quebecois. <laughs> Quebecois vermin. Actually, I, I guess it wouldn't be in a French accent. No. It would be English. <laughs> have, you, have you clicked through enough, then... Rob will come to your house and sing Nelly Furtado to you. <laughs> You're beautiful. <That's> <laughs> You're beautiful. I think, like, how about this? If you don't click through enough, <laughs> then I'm going to come to your house and sing Nelly Furtado. Rob's is going to go through his entire friends list and figure out who hasn't been listening to the podcast. That's what and I'm doing right now. House and sing to them. That's what I'm doing right now. So if you haven't been listening, you probably are listening now because I'm outside your window playing it. <laughs> Hey, we're not alone today, even though she's being very silent over there. Debbie Downer is here with us this afternoon. This is Debbie Downer, a.k.a. E.P. <laughs> E.P. is here. I like how she looked as if she was about to fillet that microphone for a moment. She got that wrist, got that, that strong wrist out there, looped it around. Get up. Uh, uh, uh. She got the technique from you. <laughs> the she? mic handling technique. <laughs> I learned from the best. <laughs> well, if you're going to be nobody, doing something. Nobody does imitation fellatio on a microphone <laughs> quite like Rob. If you got to have a skill, I suppose that's no, probably. I guess nobody really does fellatio like Rob. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so, big things happening. Yeah. Um, this is sort of a special episode of the podcast. The, the idea from the start, we don't need all that. <laughs> don't make me take that out in post. Because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> the uh, the idea behind the podcast, obviously, is we do the, the films and uh, Rob has his book out or coming out. Yes, indeed. Uh, so the idea is that every once in a while when there's a big project, we have to promote something that's out there. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear all about it beforehand. Right. Well, we got the big thing that's coming immediately is the book being released. Yes, exactly right. Which is like, I, I feel like over the course of the podcast, uh, even though the book has been written and out there in the ether to mm -hmm. some degree or another throughout the entire time that we've been recording this podcast. Right. I haven't given you the proper, like, well, here's what I, 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 I'm like, I'm insanely proud of you for having done this oh, God. well no i'm serious like this well, is so i finished it in uh january of 2013 yeah and then um some time passed before i actually got the balls to get it edited and stuff and uh i gave it to you in january of 2013 just to review and edit for me and um never got it back <laughs> Never, I did. never got copies. Never got notes. I do. I do have a, a, a another binder. another one. I, I have like two thirds of the binder filled mm -hmm. with red markings. Wait, of the book that's now being published, or yeah, the, the one, one that the one that's now <laughs> being published. Right. Yeah. I was gonna finish it. I'm gonna give it to you sometime after the first. Right. Okay. When it when it's maximum time. Right. Like, and then uh, book number four, which you also have a copy of. Yeah. And. EP has read a couple of mine. Not this one. This is the one you haven't read, right? I have not read this one. Right, which is why she purchased the book early. So tell, so uh, l let's uh, let's set this up because we're talking about multiple books and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. This is part of the series. Well, yeah, so there is um, – it's a series, but it's not just a series. So 
how I envision this whole thing is that it's there's a uh, universe. It's very similar to ours. It's slightly in the future. The present for uh, this book is the late 20 teens, which when I wrote it was pretty far away, and now we are creeping up on with remarkable yeah, we, speed. We can't we can't necessarily deny the fact that this is what the late 20 teens is going to be like, though. Right, and uh, you know that's why I tried to write it. It's very realistic. I mean, like you're not finding it's not Back to the Future. Right. Or Back to the Future 2, right? It's Back to the Future Yeah, where two. they go to the future. Right, right. It's not like... And they have hoverboards and the Cubs winning the World Series and... None of that's going to happen, we know. Yeah. So, you know, nothing like that. Uh, it's just enough far in the future that it uh, makes sense that this actually could <laughs> develop. Um, there is no set timeline, which I'm finding to be a problem now that I'm writing the sequel, that I can't remember where I was. Um, and I think I'm going to buy just a big whiteboard. That's what I do. I just buy whiteboards and. Um, no, I'm going to buy like a super big one. Oh yeah. And timeline all five of the the f- books that I have right now, so that major events always line up in all five books. So, um, but yeah, so this one is the, the kickoff. It's not the first book, but it's the kickoff book, uh, and I think it's the most exciting one. So, so is it kind of like Star Wars, where we like start in the middle? Um. Yeah, actually... And then we have prequels, and then we have... That is a very interesting way to look at it, and I didn't think about that, but it is. It's, it's of all of the books, I think it's the most exciting one. Um, and you you read a very early copy of it. Yeah. It's very action-packed, filled, it's moving, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and, I mean, I don't want to say there's no character development, because there, there is, but it's... I think it's the one that... If you read it, you're going to want to find out more about all these people. I just find that found that the this part of the story was the most exciting one, and not that there's not excitement to be had elsewhere, mm-hmm. but it's the kind of thing where like I, don't know, I fucking hate saying this, but it is like Star Wars. It's like the first Star Wars. Like you get into it, and all of these stories are happening, and at the end of it, you want to know how do we get here, where is it going from here, right. all of those things. The universe becomes part of what draws you into the right. whole thing. And then so now we can go off on the story of all of these people who are involved and they're all going to have their own adventures. They're all going to have their own story of how they got there. He wears fucking ripped up sweatshirts, but in reality he has an $8 million trust fund somewhere. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> and, and, I mean, like, uh, he can he can sympathize with... I don't with... have an $8 million trust fund, by the way. Nobody come at me for fucking money. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you have what? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, what are, you doing? what are you doing after this? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe you want to maybe you want to go to Checkers or something like that. <laughs> but no, I'm very upset. We should we can do it. We'll talk about that forever. I'm very upset. I was gonna say. So, what's this podcast about? Isn't this about like some book that's coming out? Um, what's it it, what's it called again? Because I don't think you told us the name of it. Uh, it's called the Movement Insurrection. Um, and um, the insur- I mean, the movement is what you're gonna find throughout the series. This one is uh. I've actually tentatively named all of them, and it's uh, the <laughs> alliteration. It's uh, the movement inspiration, the movement insurrection, and the movement insurgency. So those are the three main books. Uh, they're all TMI. Yeah. Which I just find, I don't know, that makes me <laughs> I'm simple minded. <laughs> I'm simple minded enough that uh, and then we got, that's okay. And then eventually it's going to be the movement beach party. <laughs> Weekend at the movement too. The weekend at the movement too. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just like two people on each side of Teddy, just like dragging him around the park. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So anyway, so back to the character. Teddy, <laughs> Teddy, if you're not alive, then my boss won't give me a raise. <laughs> uh, anyway. And what the listeners have just missed is Corey's demonstration yeah. of weekend at Bernie. Yeah, I was just, I was just doing sad, a Bernie impression. Sad. Not the first time he's done that no, on I the do podcast. That, I do though. that all the time. Though. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a camera rolling. So right. Like, well, for a while there was. So it's yeah. like a marionette. A marionette. Yeah, that's what I said. No, that's not you what you said. said. A marionette. I said marionette. No, you said a, like Mark Marinette. That's what you just said. Now we're gonna go to the tape, and you're gonna hear a subtle. Okay, wait, wait. Let's go to the tape. Yeah. Marinette. Oh fuck! <laughs> I love, when Corey, I love when Corey goes with the riffs like that. When he goes with it, I'd fucking all right. Hey. Hey. Somebody makes a movie and gets everybody rich. <laughs> According to a trailer I just saw, I'm, I'm all over. <laughs> you do my, everything. My sister. Uh, Can you collect 19 paychecks for that, by the way? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> take myself scale on each one of them. Yeah, and exactly. Just take a percentage. <laughs> I actually get ninety four percent of the profit. How about that? <laughs> Uh, so that tells me it's like a small business when you start it yourself and you're doing all kinds of shit. Not getting paid for anything. Yeah, and like yeah. you don't get paid to be a cashier no. or anything like that. You just get your annual salary. I don't know. Well, sure. Those are questions for a lawyer. I wish there was one around. Oh, hey, huh. So like, there's a little bit of that dynamic that me and my sister have, um, although she's not a Jimmy, um, <laughs> no. obviously. She's a Sarah. She's Maybe not a she Jimmy. She listen to the podcast. <laughs> doesn't support my dreams. Um, yes. I know, right? <laughs> AP would totally listen to your podcast. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I have a horrible story. I think Brendan I think Brendan listens. I don't know if Laura does. Yeah, well, Laura's, Laura's busy, obviously. Yeah, Laura's busy as shit, though. She's so. got things to do, so. Um, I'm busy and I listen. Fair enough. There. EP throwing down the gauntlet. Dead Laura, gauntlet. you've Boom. been challenged. Boom. How many hours a week do you work? <laughs> Yeah, so unless you're working uh, 61 or more, you got time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And I, I would like this to be shared. Okay. Because I was working on... What was it? I can't remember if it was that, like, everything's wrong in Pennsylvania script or if it was... Oh, God, I forgot about that. The, what the play that I script? wrote, it's just not working. It was not working like what? It's like... like, it's like uh, so I kind of, like, th- most recently I saw Tusk, the right. Kevin Smith film, where every single person in that book is a shithead. Yeah. And you don't like any of them. And then uh, by the end of the movie, like, when I when it was done and I left, mm-hmm. I was just like, wow, a movie full of shitheads isn't really as entertaining as I thought it would be. Yeah, going back to it, though. Sorry. So I don't remember what I was working on, mm-hmm. but it was the National Writing Month. Nano NanoRimo dot org. Everybody should go to N A N O R W R I M. It just happened, right? It's I'm st- happening I'm, now. It's right? in November, it's right? In November. Yeah. I am doing it right now. That's what I'm trying to finish the sequel to this. Yeah, because that I remember you came up to me. You said I'm going to finally write my book. Yeah, I'm doing this. I'm using this as the the uh, inspiration to write. Finally, write it. Yep. And it was what ten thousand words in a month or something like 50. that. 50,000. 50,000 words yeah. in a month. And I did and, 62. So. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It's not It's not as easy as it sounds. It's it, for, It's 2,000 words a day. Now, Rob hates me, by the way, <laughs> as a as a writer. I mean, not as like the, like what ends up on the page no, kind I, of thing. How you write drives how me I, insane. How I write drives Rob insane yeah. because I, if I come home from work at four and I start writing... Mm-hmm. Well, I don't start writing right away. Let's see. So I get home from work at 4, 4.20, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> About 4.45, I start writing. Mm-hmm. You eat sandwiches. Eat sandwiches at 4.20. I'm hungry. <laughs> and then uh, there's, I don't know, probably like I sit there for two and a half, three hours and write 19 pages. Mm-hmm. And then I go upstairs and I chain smoke and I come down and I read them all and I hate myself and then I delete it all. Most of it. And then I write, no, I delete it all. Ugh. And then I write 19 more pages, just like fucking clack, 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 crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I chain smoke and then I come down and I read it and I hate it myself. And then by the end, there was once where I wrote 100 pages. Yeah. I'm not lying. 100 pages in, a, in an of, afternoon. And none of it survived. And none of it survived. Yeah. Deleted every single word yeah. of it because I was so like... I do I do that like uh I talk to myself. Rob's probably Rob hey, probably I, heard this a shit ton at, at Ridgely's Delight. I did. Where I just like be standing sitting in my room, like looking at the computer screen, going like, You fucking piece of shit. That is exactly you what were, Cordell was gonna use. You hear. are the fucking worst writer ever in the history of the world. You deserve to die and get a bullet put in your fucking head. Yeah. Goddamn jerk. And then you walk outside and you fucking chain smoke and then you come back up and you just go like, Look at that shit. <laughs> Fucking whipping your laptop across the room. Yeah. And then eventually I write like five pages that I like all right. And I'm just like, I'm going to bed. So, but <laughs> that is literally how you write. Now, I wrote this, which is now pu- will be published. Yeah. I wrote the stream of consciousness. I just busted it all out. And then the editing process was moving things around and changing it slightly. Do you remember when you, you were uh, tweeting with a, a member of the Navy? Oh shit! And then I all of a sudden, across 
another gosh. jurisdiction came into knocking on your door. Well, they didn't came. They came looking for you, right? Didn't they come to the apartment? No, they came looking for you, but at the, the apartment. apartment. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's a funny story. So uh, I went back and forth with this guy who's in Guam or somewhere, who's in the Navy, um, and I don't know. It was just like uh, we got into a flame war about whatever we get into a flame war is about, and then all of a sudden. All of a sudden, uh, the cops show up. They I feel like I feel like it was a, a a pretty innocuous reference to a gun. It, so I think it was something like uh, somebody was. Uh, he he said something like, "Oh, you're not gonna be so smart if somebody could, puts a gun in your face." And then you're just like, yeah. "I don't I don't give a shit if you put a gun in my face." Right. Something then, very yeah. Very, that that style. <laughs> and uh, there was a reference made to the gym where she also not be named worked. Right. So that's in Baltimore County. So they went to the gym. Nothing, obviously, because right. the dude's in Guam. And then they came to the apartment. Baltimore County cops came into the city to our apartment to look for them. See, now, this is what people don't understand, is when we tell these crazy-ass stories, when I tell these crazy-ass stories, this shit actually happens yeah. in my life. Um, But you're right in one aspect, that is, the thing, when that happened, the, uh, the Baltimore County thing, is what kind of led to ideas about the movement. The yeah. book being right. it, it's a, that shit sh- just gets kind of crazy, and you're like, I mentioned something on Twitter. We yeah. have a Twitter flame war, and not e- it was innocuous on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I mean flame war. If you would have if you would have if you would have read it, you would have said like, oh well, you know, there's nothing. I think Rob has had much worse Twitter wars um, in recent days. I've, I, I have. No, I mean I've said way more controversial things. Yeah. Um, and that's how I know. That's when I got my name on the list. If there was a list my name wasn't on before, that's what got me on the list. I haven't really talked much about the whole point of the book. But the whole point of the book is uh, the movement is um, what people are calling this thing that happens. And when the country kind of is going to shit in the same way that it's going to shit now, um, this author writes a book. And the book says, you know, we can do things differently. We can do things uh, better. And this is how we do it. And when people, re- it's uh, it's not a, it's not a novel. It's a, a book that actually has a lot of. It's like a political book, and um, he's like all, Great Gatsby. Uh, n- not a novel. Uh, so it, that would be a novel. Yeah. Uh, it's not a novel. So it's like Mein Kampf. It's like America by John Stewart. Oh, okay. Where like it has a. He's just looking at things on my bookshelf. Yeah, it has like intermediate a, algebra didn't work. <laughs> it has like an entertainment <laughs> feel, but it's factual. Right. And, um, it, you know, he self-publishes, and then it takes off, and it gets picked up by all these people, and they're saying, you know, like, um, uh, there is actually an, a, a, a uh, homage to John Stewart and Stephen Colbert in there. Um, and um, so he gets uh, some national attention, and then these people start getting these groups together and saying, well, you know, it's really not far-fetched for us to do this. We could do that. We can take care of each other. We can, uh, you know, get food together for the people who are less fortunate. We can... Uh, start voting for people who really matter, and um, then there's a, uh, a the bad situation gets worse based on uh, what we had and a lot of factual investigation going on. To the a depression sets in and like jobs are lost and things get as worse as as bad as you can imagine them ever being. Uh, and this group starts to take proactive action and um, do things rather than just kind of sitting around and talking about them. And Teddy isn't Teddy and Jimmy and uh, Mark are on the front lines of all this stuff that's happening. Um, but I think that uh, it, no matter who you are, I think that you'll find something about the book that you like. But yeah, so uh, click through, check out the movementinsurrection.com. Uh, you'll be able to find stuff. You can find us on uh, Twitter at TM Insurrection uh, on Facebook. Uh, at uh, facebook.com forward slash the movement insurrection. Basically, the movement insurrection everywhere, Google Plus. And all, all that will be in highlighted in, in social media posts. So. And so, and if, if you do like it, please send me some feedback. Uh, make comments on, on Amazon. Um, what, I, what I really want is uh, I want to, I want this to be a big hit. Mm-hmm. And lots of people write customer reviews about it. Yeah. And then uh, I can just read negative reviews to you on the show. Yeah. It'll be like celebrities read mean tweets on Jimmy Kimmel. That'd be super like, fun. Yeah. Like I'll just I'll just sit you down and then I'll just be like Robert Cheek is a massive gas bag. Yes. And he never stops with his stupid fucking bullshit all the time. Yeah. One star love Steph. 
<laughs> she didn't have three ninety nine. Uh oh the anthem dot com. Corey at oh the anthem dot com. Oh the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, YouTube, Vimeo, and the listener line four four three two one nine seven five nine five. One more time. Four four three two one nine seven five nine five. The phone number's so nice we say it twice. And I would love if you do read the book and you have some comments, call us in. Oh call yeah. Come in and let me hear your voice. Let me hear the love so that I take the gun out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> about how few sales there are going to be of this thing. Um, so uh, when eleven people have bought your book and you're just like nobody loves <laughs> anybody. Uh, so you can find me online at Robert and Cheek uh, at almost all of your social networks. Uh, you can find uh, on Facebook, for Facebook, Rob Cheek Esquire. Oh, shit, I still need to do. It. I still yeah. need to turn that shit over. You say that every time. I say it every <laughs> week. I just don't have time. I, I mean. Uh, I'm running around doing a thousand things. Uh, and as I said before, you can find the Movement Insurrection at all your social networks as well. Generally, it's the Movement Insurrection, <laughs> except for Twitter, which is TM Insurrection. Um, when when we post all the social media stuff for this, just click on it and give it a It'll all be there. Yeah. And uh, a dead so drop, you can get all the latest news. Check out a deaddrop.com, the Movement Insurrection.com, Robert and Cheek, and, um, oh. and, and then. And then. Oh, nothing, nothing has happened yet. I just bought the domain. Oh, what's the domain? But very soon you're going to be able to see uh, more about me and my professional, like, personal directing stuff mm-hmm. at, ready? CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com. Boom. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, it rolls off the tongue. We got, and I, I know I keep saying it, but we have so much coming down the pipe for you guys in the next year 2015 is going to be big 2015 is going to blow up it's going to be huge i can't wait to show some of the stuff that we have coming so. yeah but right now we can't say anything no we can't it's frustrating uh but also uh we're going to get back on this because i want to which is uh we want to show the love letter yeah so come out with your ideas we are actually looking for a place that we can show it if you have an idea of a place that would be great we would love to do a live podcast with a, uh, the first showing. What I think, if nothing else, I, I think we should just get a place where we can, you know, like do the projector and mm-hmm. a big screen. And then, I don't know, we'll buy like beer and sodas. and. Well, I would love a place that already serves beer. Yeah, that would be, be great, great too. Uh, if you have a bar or other sort of places. Mm-hmm. Anyway, hey, do you want to promote any of your stuff? Well, I was going to, you know, throw them a bone and just say that you can find me at easy 3 Is that it? That's all you're giving? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like. If you want a lot more, hit subscribe. Up here, you can catch this week's full episode and right below, a link to buy Rob's book. See you next week. Yeah, they pulled him out of bookstores.